Hi, friends. Welcome back to Live at the Roxy on this Sunday fun day. Cheers to you. Cheers to me. Cheers to not going KKG. That's just something we used to say in my sorority before I deactivated slash was thrown out. But that's a story for a different time. Cheers. With my tea, ASMR. Uh, All right, we got a lot to talk about today on the show, guys, because we are talking television, which you guys know is one of my favorite things on the planet to talk. Uh, We're talking about the top comedies, the top dramas, the top docu-series, and more. I put out my top 10 list for comedies on Twitter today, but I have my top 10 for all those categories. There's still a few shows I haven't seen yet. But, uh, you know, there are 425 original series, every scripted series every year. So how am I supposed to watch them all? Gotta catch them all, Pokemon. Pokemon, spoiler alert, did not make my list. Just being completely upfront with you guys. So we're talking TV. Can't wait for you guys to chime in, give your opinions. What do you think are the best shows of the year? Start getting those in now. As always, we'll also go to the Streamlabs, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer, and right here in the Super Chat. If you are not a TV fan, then maybe this will get you into TV. Maybe we'll make some recommendations for you that will make you be like, holy shit, what have I been missing out on? Because I truly believe in all years that the best television is stronger than the best movies. However, especially in this year where we do not have nearly the amount of movies that we typically do. TV was where it's at this year. I love television because you spend longer with these characters. You can get a a deeper dive and more impacted by these people that you've been living with sometimes for years. So to me, television is the thing. You guys know my dream of all dreams is to write, produce, and star in my own TV show a la Mindy Kaling, Lena Dunham, Issa Rae, Tina Fey, Amy Poehler, all these incredible badasses who have done so before me. That is the ultimate. So I got to give TV credit where it is due, and we will do that live on the show today. Uh, Yes, Lego Landon here saying TV of 2020. Does that mean first ever ever episode dropped this year? No, it just means it aired this year. So this wasn't TV shows that started this year. This was just TV that was on in 2020. It's also not just TV that you watched in 2020 because there's a lot of shows that I didn't watch until this year for the first time. But if they didn't come out in 2020, then they don't count for 2020. So that is what we're talking about today. Let's go into the Streamlabs and see what you guys have to say. Streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer before we start getting to some of these lists. Today is December 27th. That means we are multiple days removed from Christmas. So spirits should be high in the sky like apple freaking pie or whatever it is. Uh, Let's go to Katie the Good Witch who last night at 9 p.m. said, I see Maria Menounos on the screen literally every time I go to a gas station. That's so great. I love that. Makes me smile because I know you two are buds. I know she's from After Buzz, but who exactly is she and what influence has she had or does she continue to have in your life? Yeah, so multiple things. Number one, Maria has been my friend and my boss for the last 10 years. She employed me at After Buzz always, but she is, I knew her coming up. She's from Boston. She's a Medford girl um, and she was bounced around. She was on Channel One and then she was at extra and access. And then she was a host on E for many years. I knew her also from One Tree Hill. She had an awesome arc on that show. She was in the Fantastic Four movie. She's an actress host uh, and an all around incredible person. She's had a massive influence on my life. I talk often on the show about Kevin Undergaro, who is my mentor, and this is her life partner and also her manager. Uh, it's her his wife. I always say life partner because they were together for 20 something years. And I knew them for a long time before they got married, but now they are married. They got married, engaged on the Howard Stern show. That was a really big deal. And um, yeah, she's done incredible things for me, both personally, professionally, and otherwise. I can't thank her enough. So great question. I'm glad that you see her on gas station TV. Uh, You can also watch her show every day, um, Better Together, which is on podcast and YouTube and all of that great stuff. And she does a great job talking to experts, health experts and life and advice and sometimes celebs. Um, And really she has done so much in this industry. And also she, uh, her mom has stage four brain cancer right now. Maria herself had a brain tumor. So she's gone through a lot in life 
grew up really, really poor, has made an unbelievable name for herself, was a pageant girl back in the day, is a huge Boston sports fan. So she's really done it all. She's a great person to listen to if you're not already. She's pretty badass. So that's my my little brief pitch on Maria Menounos, my dear friend and uh, amazing human being in my life. Anyway, check her out if you guys don't know her already, although I'm guessing most of you probably do. Great question from Katie, though. LD in the house, our girl LD, LD123 says, Hey, coach, another single show day today, and then off to Hollywood to screen test for Hallmark. Romeo and I slept together, not sex, just sleeping when I stayed with him. I have more of a world girl question, but I really need an answer for this evening. There's no such thing as more of a world girl question, LD. I've got you, but you can always ask the world girls as well. Uh, when I stayed there on Christmas, I went to blow him, but there was an issue. It's not long at all, but pretty thick. I have a small mouth, so I just kind of sucked on the head, played with the balls until I got him off. LD, explicit, love it. Uh, I told him I was not ready to have sex, or LD says, fuck. Uh, he was more than okay with that, but I really want to tonight. It's, he is driving me in the morning to the airport. My vibrator and Mr. Four Minutes both are pretty thin. I'm worried this will hurt. Any advice? I'm super worried. I really like him. I need help. I definitely don't think it's going to hurt LD. Make sure that you guys do enough foreplay. You have to make sure you're ready to go down there. So you don't just want to go from zero to a hundred. Um, as long as there's enough lead up, you should be totally fine. I believe in you. I think you've got this. And uh, if anybody else has tips in the chat, then let us know. Jake Yacovetta says, The Daily Adventures of LD's Awakening. I know. I'm so here for it. Love it. Uh, it's it's awesome. So, LD, I think that, yeah, you'll be fine. And don't think too much about it like that because then you'll, like, get yourself all amped up. And I think it will totally be okay. Uh, foreplay rules, says Haskell. Totally. That's the, that's the jam. LD, you've got this. We're rooting for you. You go, girlfriend, and keep us posted on how it goes. I'm sure you will. Going back into the Streamlabs, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. Rob Fishbeck says, just want to say congratulations again on achieving your goal of 1,000 followers on Instagram and Twitter. And it's only been since August. I was follower number 17 on Twitter. That's amazing. Can't express how happy I am for you all. So much love to you and everyone here. Yeah, so he's talking about the World Girls, um, at the World Girls on Twitter, at World Girls WAP on Instagram. I told Steph and D when I started these social media accounts that by the end of this year, I wanted to hit a thousand followers and we hit that both on Twitter and Instagram yesterday. Thanks to you guys. So thank you so much for keeping my word to Steph and D. I'm the one who runs all of our social media and uh, slowly, but surely I just want to keep growing. You know, if we can quickly double and then quadruple and then, you know, before we know it, we have 1 million followers. Ha 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 ha. Yeah, it's awesome. You guys are the best. Thank you. Glenn Caesar in the house. Thank you, Glenn, for being the most freaking supportive, awesome mascot and human on the planet. He says, hello and good afternoon, Roxy. Love you. Thanks for hanging out with us on this show. Hopefully, happy World Girl Sunday. Woo, 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 woo. Peace, love, bunnies, and hugs to you, Sky, and the Rockstars Band. Cheers to you and yours and to having a love-filled rest of 2020. Happy holidays. As always, I hope that we can all feel and find some joy in each of our days, our weeks, our months, and even our years. Don't ever forget when it gets tough, we're not alone. Even if we're by ourselves, the rock stars and world friends communities are here for you. Remember everyone, you're kind, you're smart, you're important, you are worthy. So keep on being your terrific selves because I, we appreciate you. As always, hashtag smash cancer. Keep up the fight, Smets, and everyone else who's battling. We are with you. Smets and I had a long conversation this morning. He is kicking ass and taking names, y'all. And he's doing it all in the name of his of his ladies, so of his girls, which is freaking awesome. He's killing it. And I'm um, just so proud of him and so excited for him to come out on the other side of this. He's battling like a motherfucker. And, um, yeah, he's got all of our support. Lloyd Nance in the stream labs. Lloyd Nance, my very first super chatter ever says, cheers, Roxy. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday to you, Lloyd. Thank you so much for the support in here. Appreciate you. Love you. Need ya. All that great stuff. Paul 3JP in the house. If Steph was here, I'd have her read it. She uh, would do it so well and so cutely. But instead, you've got me. Apollo says, fam, first off, happy Sunday. You're awesome. Best TV of 2020. The Boys, The Mandalorian, Season 2, and Ted Lasso. Apollo, great ones. Glad to see those on your list. We'll see if they are on mine as well. 
Hmm, that's called the tease, folks. Stone Fanboy 15 says, Happy Holidays, Roxy. Is it still the holidays? I guess until New Year's. And this Kwanzaa. Happy Kwanzaa, guys. I uh, hope you're doing well. Just hanging in there and doing my best for a holiday wish. I'm hoping we get to see Frozen and Carbonite in future Star Wars, either in your cute pose or whatever pose they have you in. Totally, I'm not going to bitch about any pose they want me in for Star Wars. Ha ha, take it easy. Thank you, Stone Fanboy. Appreciate you, friend. Glenn Caesar says, once again, to keep the daily reminders going, Miles Cosgrove, Brett Hankinson, Jonathan Mattingly, arrest the cops who killed Breonna Taylor, all three of them for killing Breonna Taylor. Thank you, RJ, for still giving Breonna a voice since she's not here. Absolutely, Glenn. We're going to continue to do that on this show every single day for as long as we fucking have to. Chris Martinez in the Streamlabs, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Shire says, hey, Roxy, for the majority of quarantine, Star and I watch Friends all the time so for me that was the show of 2020 even though it doesn't count i feel that that's the show of every year though that would be the number one show on my list every single year if that's the way we play the game chris martinez i'm not mad at it though because friends is the best glenn caesar also says roxy i'm digging these movie slash tv ranking episodes that you've been doing to wrap up the year they're fun to get into and a nice change of pace Way to keep it fresh and keep us on our toes, RJ. As Borat would say, very nice. LOL, two thumbs up from me. A very nice. It's my wife, a baby in my belly. All of that good stuff. Borat was a good one. Oh, yeah, if we're talking movies, that would definitely make my list. But we're not. We're talking TV. And there's a couple things going on in the super chat. Then I will start getting to my list. You guys, make sure you're submitting yours early. Get them in loud and proud. Streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer are right here in the super chat. Speaking of the super chat, Megan Ryan in the house says, I think it came out last year, but I loved watching Stargirl this summer for stuff that came out this year. Nothing beats The Mandalorian. The Mandalorian's so good. So good. So good. I can't believe I still haven't seen Stargirl. As the DC lover I am, where the fuck have I been? Rob says the best show on TV is still The Walking Dead. I do love that show. I do love that show. There's a lot of honorable mentions. Maybe we'll get to some of those. But let's start by talking about the list that I already put out, my top 10 comedy series of 2020. I already noticed that one of the shows that I didn't put on here was Modern Family. It feels like so long ago. Was that even this year? But if it was, that didn't make my list. And I've loved that show for a really long time. So I really do love it. Um, but on this list... For me, oh, did this copy and paste weird to Twitter? How did it number? So strange. Oh, my God. Oh, no, it did it right. There we go. It looks all weird on my phone. So for my top 10 comedy series of 2020, at number 10, I have Ted Lasso. I love this show. This was the surprise sleeper pick for me. It was on a lot of people's top 10 list. I hadn't seen it yet. It's got so much heart and soul and, like, warmth to it. To be 100% honest with you guys, I still have, I think, one episode left, but I love this show so much that I couldn't keep this off my list. I'm so glad that Steph and I started watching this, and yeah, it's funny, it's cute, it's endearing, it's easy to root for, it's all of those great things, and um, yeah, I'm just really, really into it. So if you're not watching Ted Lasso, that one is great, and that aired for the first time this year. At number nine, I put Never Have I Ever. Never Have I Ever is this awesome show that came out in the middle of a time where I needed some love and levity and humor in my life. Um, and so this was really, really cute to see. I am a huge, huge Mindy Kaling fan, and she was the producer of this. So I was like, okay, if Mindy tells me that something's going to be good, it's probably going to be good. There was a lot of it based on her own childhood, although she's not in the show. Uh, the log line is the complicated life of a modern day first generation Indian American teenage girl inspired by Mindy Kaling's own childhood. The show was awesome. It was so, so clever and cute. Um, it hit me out of nowhere. It was a lot of fun and super great to watch with the family. It was a Netflix quick binge for me and uh, it came out in April. So we were just like a month into the pandemic and I was like, oh, somebody give me something. When, I, when my show just starts to play back. Mm -hmm. Somebody give me something and they did. 
and I really like this show. Who watched Never Have I Ever? For those of you who did, you know that this was awesome. Pink Sweet says, aw, lol, I like Never Have I Ever. Yeah, it was really cute. It was really freaking cute. Loved this one. Uh, so if you haven't watched it, it's definitely worth a binge. You'll get through it like that so, so quick. At number eight, I had Curb Your Enthusiasm. I don't know that there's ever been a year in which a Curb Your Enthusiasm came out, a new season of it, and I didn't have it on my list. This is one of my favorite shows of all time. I think that the show is brilliant. I actually prefer it to Seinfeld. Don't tell Josh Makuga. It's great. It's uh, quirky and weird and raunchy and all the shit with Make America Great Again this year was so fucking poignant and laugh out loud funny. And Larry David during this time he just nailed it. He nailed it. This uh, this season was excellent. And I can't say enough positive things about the show in general. It's really, really, truly phenomenal. So Curb Your Enthusiasm, after all these years, it's still so effing good. So effing good. Number seven on my list was Sex Education. Sex Education is another one that I hadn't watched any episodes of. Um, and all of a sudden during quarantine, I was looking for some binges and we were already two seasons deep into it. And I was like, huh, what is this show? It's got a couple of actors that I know. Um, uh, Gillian Anderson is in it. I never know if it's Gillian or Jillian. I always fuck up her name. But I like her a lot. And some people have been talking about it. Darina was like, this show is great. The log line is a teenage boy with a sex therapist mother teams up with a high school classmate to set up an underground sex therapy clinic at school. This show, I... I binged in like two seasons like this. I mean, I, I went through it so fast that I was fucking crushed because I was like, oh my God, what am I supposed to do? Oh, three seasons. Oh my God. There are three seasons of this. Oh no. The third season's coming out in 2021. Ooh, when, when do we get the third season? I must know. Oh, it hasn't announced when it's going to air. but this was a January show. I didn't watch it until a little later in, but I can't recommend this show enough. Uh, it makes you feel awkward. brings you back to your teenage years. Uh, it's it's weird. It's all Euro and great and all that great stuff. It's really awesome. I can't recommend it. All of these I recommend highly, obviously. Sex education is really good. Says Rafism. 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 Maybe that's how you say it. Next season coming out till August. Scott, no. This show is awesome. It's really, really effing good. So make sure you check it out. And number six, I have Dead to Me. This is a show that I think is, it, it is a comedy, but there's so much to it. I think it's one of the best performed shows on TV. It's Christina Applegate and Linda Cardellini, and they're both so effing good. Their chemistry is incredible on this show. Uh, Liz Feldman is the creator of this, so... To me, you know, Liz Feldman uh, of, of Two Broke Girls also. She was a writer on the Ellen DeGeneres show for years. She's a phenom. And um, yeah, gosh, this is a good one. This is a really, really good one. If you like kooky, weird comedies, there's a series about powerful friendship that blossoms between a tightly wound widow and free spirit with a shocking secret. It's about loss and love and kookiness and friendship and all these awesome things. So definitely love this one. Love this one. So good. So good. Damn, damn, so good. Number five, The Good Place. So sad to see the show go. Thank you for all of the laughs that this show gave me. Every season that you thought it was going to get stale, it never did. This show would have gotten many more Emmys if it had not been up against Shit's Creek because this show deserved this year a lot of recognition. It's laugh out loud funny. It's sweet. I keep using that, but I love that combination of sweet and funny. And uh, yeah, it definitely, it changed, it changes season by season and you it never lets you down. And that's super, super key. At number four, a comedy that I didn't find until late, but now that I'm on it, it's one of my favorite shows, and that is Pen15. This show I talk about on here all the time. I finally got Steph to watch it. Now she's hooked. It is about these two 30-year-old women who are pretending to be in eighth grade. Not in the show. They're not pretending. They're, the actresses are in their 30s. Maya and Anna. 
I, you can't explain how uncomfortable this show is. It makes you cringe. I love cringe TV. It is so, a lot of the episodes are very poignant. One of the two main stars is Japanese. They talk about growing up Japanese in a predominantly white town or with white friends. And it is informative while being entertaining and hysterical and all of that stuff. So Pen15 for the win. And number three, a show that I didn't start until this year. I can't believe it. But we were in quarantine and I was like, no excuses, play like a champ. Everybody says it's one of the greatest shows of all time. So how are you not fucking watching it, especially when you're so obsessed with Issa Rae? And that's Insecure. Number three was Insecure. And I'm so here for this show. So, so here for it. It's one of those shows where you're like, are you team this person? Are you team this person? You get where everybody's coming from. You don't know exactly what you're rooting for, but you know that you want just to keep watching. And uh, Issa Rae is brilliant. I aspire to be like her one day. I am, I'm so, so into it. And thank gosh, quarantine got me on board with the show. Cause how can I consider myself a real TV watcher if I don't watch Insecure? This is like the show. At two, this hit me like a shit ton of bricks. Dave, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God, Dave. If you're not watching Dave, then you're missing out on one of the greatest, greatest shows. This show not only is a comedy, but it has the best episode about mental illness that I've ever seen in my life. It is something that goes there. It makes you think. It makes you laugh. Its main character is so fucking annoying and frustrating, but it's just ridiculously on point every episode this is must watch tv if you're missing dave then you are missing one of the best one of the best it's so good who in here watches dave i haven't seen anybody who watches it who does not absolutely love it it's so so good and then coming in at number one i put schitt's creek schitt's creek there's a reason it won all the motherfucking emmys schitt's creek convinced us to fall in love with a show that takes place in a town that's so small and the plot everything is so small about this show but the people are so large oh this show does such a great job highlighting the lgbtqia community it does an amazing job of making you like dislikable people and making people who are not relatable kind of relatable Oh, it's so good. It's so good. David, David. I could just quote it all day, but I will not do that because we don't have time because we have to get to my other lists. But those were my top 10 comedies. Megan says, oh my God, I forgot about Julie and the Phantoms. Julie and the Phantoms. What the hell is this? Julie and the Phantoms. Did I miss a big show? Julie and the Phantoms 2020. Let's see. It's a comedy family fantasy. Wow, this was on Netflix, came out in September. I completely missed this one. I'll have to check it out. You know, even if you're as big of a TV watcher as I am, sometimes you miss them. So Megan, thank you for putting that on my watch list. I'm excited for it. Yeah. Let me know for you guys in the Streamlabs and in the Super Chat, what were your top comedies? What did I miss on my list? What was on my list that you completely agree with? In the world of comedies, how are you guys feeling? How would I do with my top 10? Go into the Streamlabs right now. Streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. Pink Sweet says my top shows. Upload. It's on Amazon. Highly recommend. Unorthodox. I May Destroy You. The Mandalorian. The Great. It's on Hulu featuring uh, Elle Fanning. It's amazing. Kingdom. Season 2. Ted Lasso. Alice in Borderland. Bojack. The Boys. And Ozark. Season 3. A lot of those are on my list. Pink Sweet's great ones. Jake Yacovetta says, I still say you should watch Kim's Convenience. Shim, uh, Shimu Liu, Liu. Is that how you say it? It's on two different lines here. Shimu Liu is great in it, and it's kind of around the same vibe as Schitt's Creek. Canada uh, Canada had two hits with these ones. Hmm. Then maybe I should. Um, and they have a hit with Working Moms, which is so fucking good. Was that this year? Because if it was, Working Moms. If that was this year, that should have been on my list. I don't know where I would have put it, but it was so good. Working Moms episode guide. 
Oh, I love that show. Yeah, it was this year. How could that not have been on my list? So good. Definitely, definitely should have been on there. Definitely should have been on there. Working Moms. So good. Um, it's Always Sunny is one of the best ever. Oh, my God. It's my fave. When was that? Uh, episode list. So hard. So hard. to No, yeah, 2019. All right, I didn't miss that one. I didn't miss that one. Thank goodness. But Working Moms, I did miss. All right, let's move forward, guys. Moving on to talk about... Let's get to uh, the docu-series. Okay, this is what I'm calling reality slash competition slash docu-series slash talk. So basically anything non-scripted. This is my non-scripted category. So for my non-scripted category, number 10 is kind of cheating, but hey, it was televised, which means it was on TV, which means I get to put it as a TV show. So at number 10, I put the presidential debates. This was must-watch TV of this year. It was fucking wild. I can't even believe that this took place. I couldn't take my eyes off the screen. Even when they did dueling ones on different networks, I watched them both. The, uh, even the VP debate, everything about this. Flygate, come on. How is this not in the top 10? So it is on my top 10, and I put it as number 10 because it feels like putting it higher than that. I don't know about that. At number nine, I put The Circle. Did you guys watch The Circle? The show is fucking bizarro. Bizarro, bizarro. So good. So good. I mean, I, I didn't even know. I, I think that this is like a real app too. I don't use it, but the circle was was just a great um a great time and also a weird human experience. It was a uh Netflix show and basically they are like you're you're talking through an app it's almost like a dating app but it's not it's like a social media app and you're talking through it and some people are catfishing people and other people are not i'm trying to see even what the lo what they're calling the log line of this uh, american reality competition series produced by studio lambert da -da -da -da, aired in january um, Netflix is launching different versions now in France and Brazil. That's because it was so popular. It's a contest competition show. There's all different kinds of personalities. These players all living in the same apartment, but they don't get to meet face to face, but they have to make these relationships and they're all DMing all day and they have these competitions and, uh, Joey, I, I don't even want to spoil it for you guys, but whatever. These characters are freaking awesome. The show is great. If you didn't see the circle, it was nuts. Thank you, Pink Sweets. I agree. It was totally nuts. This show is bizarro.com. So the circle is on my list. Uh, also on my list at number eight, Love is Blind. This was a love competition dating show, but you didn't get to see the other person until you were engaged. Um, I don't even know how or what, like, how this worked, but it did. It was so fun. One of the couples on this was like so incredibly heartwarming that you root for them so hard. And then some of the people are absolute trash and you never want them to get together. But it was really cool. Uh, shout out to Kinetic, who is the production company on this one. And they really have a hit on their hands because I would watch 50,000 more seasons of this. Not joking. You guys love is blind is freaking awesome. Also on my list coming up after that seven too hot to handle. If you guys didn't watch this, this was like watching Bachelor in Paradise on crack. The premise of this show is that it's a bunch of horny 20-something-year-olds that are put on an island together and they think they're going on a dating show. And once they're there, they're told that they will win. The less sex they have, the more money they will win. So they will win money as long as they don't fuck. And they're like unable to not fuck. It is so good. You just watch it and you think, how? How is this real? And these people cannot keep themselves from like making out and stuff. And every time they do, they're losing thousands of dollars. And it's just like, what? What? Stop fucking you horny people. Stop. So good. It was so bad, but it was so good. It was so bad. It was good. Number six, I put the last dance. How could this not be on people's list if you watched it? If you're a basketball fan, if you're a fan of sports in general or competition or or of Michael Jordan, I mean, 
the last dance was a joy to watch. The music was incredible. Even if you already know the story, there were different stories that I was not aware of in there. It was so well done. It was strange the way that it came out because it was in multiple different locations and it came out on Netflix later on after being on ESPN, which um, I know made it so that a lot of people couldn't see it at first, but I watched this as it came out every week and I just was loving this, loving this. It was everything. And um, yeah, everything. Right above that, because this season was just so, so good, and we had multiple of them, the Bachelorette guys, I'm putting this high on my list because I've never been a massive Bachelorette person, but now I'm all in. I'm like, I should go on this show. This show is full of love. Tasha was the best Bachelorette of all time. The drama of Claire leaving and the whole fucking thing. This got me through a huge chunk of quarantine and gave me something to look forward to every single Tuesday. Yes. Number four is a show that was canceled and I'm devastated about that, but I still need to talk about that. And it's the only one on here that's talk and that is Patriot Act. Hmm. I'm so bummed. Patriot Act, Hasa Minaj's show did exactly what I needed it to do. It picked topics. It informed me on things that I didn't know about. And in 2020, um, where we were going all over the place and there was so much shit that mattered, it really helped me focus on what really does matter. And I'm I'm crushed that the show is not with us anymore. I'm crushed. The show was so, so good. I know a lot of people prefer Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, but to me, Hasa Minaj's show was my show. I still love John Oliver's show, but this show was great. And I think that Netflix made a big mistake in canceling it. Big mistake. I don't know about financially, but just like for my well-being. For anybody who didn't watch Patriot Act, it still has really re relevant episodes and things that you don't know are going on in the world that are important. So huge one for me. Number three, I talked about this every week on the show, The Vow. This was uh, about the Nexium scandal, the sex cult scandal. This was horrific to watch. I thought I knew a lot about the sex cult scandal, but I did not know as much as I needed to know. And The Vow made it so that I was informed. It was great. It was horrible to watch. It was necessary. And they did an excellent job with it. Apparently, there's going to be a season two. There's a lot more to the story that we have to uncover. And... Yeah. Um, at number two, I have Jeffrey Epstein, Filthy Rich. I also talked about this on the show all the time. Fuck this show. Not really. The show was great. But fuck Jeffrey Epstein. The whole fucking thing was atrocious. This shows us what money can fucking do, what privilege can do, how our system is so fucked up and ass backward. Um, I, it, it got me introduced to Ghislaine Maxwell, who I didn't even fucking know was going to be the villain of the century. I mean, this show was... Ugh. Ugh. But it was excellently done and very informative when I needed it to be. And number one on this list, and this is because of what it did. This is the most 2020 show of, this, of the year. This is the most, the biggest show of this year. And I can't believe it. And in a different year, it might not have been, but because of the time that we're in, it's Tiger King. It's Tiger King. You can't talk about you can't talk about non-scripted and not talk about Tiger King. Mind blowing. I mean, everybody like Carol Baskins on Dancing with the Stars. People are going to prison. This whole thing is like, what the fuck? What the fuck is this show? What is this shit? What is this big cat rescue fucking? What's fucking going on here? Every week I was like. Or every episode, I was like, what? And then we go back, and we're talking to all the people still, and there's so many follow-ups, and it's just fucking Tiger King. <sighs> Mind-blowing. What about for you guys? Non-scripted, let me know. Uh, so now we've gone through comedies and non-scripted, and I want to know from you guys what's on your list. Let's check in with Streamlabs, streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer. And see what's up here. T. Roy Jenkins says, Roxy TV had a great 2020. What we do in the showers. I may just, uh, shadows, not showers. What we do in the showers is a completely different show. I may destroy you. The good place and better things are top tier. However, BoJack Horseman, final eight episodes, was the 2020 TV show to beat for me just for the episode. The view from halfway down. I didn't watch that. I do like BoJack, though. But um, 
I don't watch consistently. Appreciate you sending that in, T. Roy Jenkins. Thank you so much. Leonard Kim in here says, my list is Mandalorian, Ted Lasso, Lucifer, Umbrella Academy, The Boys, Queen's Gambit, Flight Attendant, Stargirl, Upload, Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist, Mythic Quest, Outer Banks, Gordon Ramsay, Uncharted, Good Place, Avenue 5. Your, uh, the hair looks pretty. Thanks, Leonard Kim. You're the best. I love hearing about your top shows. Thanks for sharing. Uh, Glenn Caesar says, Roxy, this message is from Legoland. Okay, uh, quote, Julie and the Phantom is like yawning puppy level of cute. I agree with Megan Ryan. I'm not ashamed to have watched beat slash be watching it. It was adorable. I don't even know the show. It's so wild. Maybe I should watch. Thank you guys for letting me know. What are you guys thinking? Let me know. Streamlabs.com slash Roxy Stryer and in the super chat. And thank you for sticking with me through these lists as we get to my top 10 dramas. Again, things are always subject to change, but this is how I feel right now based on the shows that I saw this year. Um, some things that I'm still going through. Keeping in mind, I have not seen The Undoing um, and I have not seen The Morning Show. And those were on a lot of people's lists and I just haven't gotten time for them yet, but I will be watching those. But those were two huge ones that I did not see that I fully intend on watching. But they are not on my list for that reason. Number 10, uh, my number 10 spot, I put Haunting of Bly Manor. Now, I did prefer Haunting of Hill House. However, Haunting of Blind Manor was excellent. And because just in general, the series, it's so strong, so good. Just really, really a little eerie, a little interesting, different than the other shows that we watch. And so I loved it. I love the characters. I loved the show. Number nine, how to sell drugs online fast. For those of you guys who haven't heard of this show, it's a German show. I watched it dubbed. It was so good in Bizarro. It's about people who need to learn how to sell drugs online fast. And it's quirky. It, it, might, be, it might be a comedy, but I put it as a drama because it's dramedy. A lot of shows like this are these days. I just look at it more of a drama, but it, it, there's a lot of comedic elements to it. It was tough to call which what place to put it, but it's really, really good. And if you're looking outside of the U.S., this show does an excellent job. Number eight on my list, a show that I almost didn't see this year, but because it was on so many people's top ten lists, which is why I love these top ten lists, I put, um, I put, I may destroy you. There was an episode of the show that really pissed me off, but in general, I think that this show was excellent. It's a show that is on a lot of people's comedy lists. Again, I had a hard time figuring out where to place this one because it's only a half hour, but I think I have to call it a drama. It's a show about sexual assault, although there are some very comedic moments. It breaks your heart. It shows you the gray area of things. It's really challenging to get through, but it is definitely, definitely worth your time. So that is number eight on my list. Number seven on my list the show that always will be on my list for as long as it airs probably because I don't even care what people say about it being emotionally manipulative or whatever. Uh, this is us. This is us touches my soul in a way that a lot of other shows don't. It's so beautiful. It's so brilliant. It's so poignant. It's so good. It is there. Number six, a show that I didn't even think I would start watching again because I just was not into it. But wow, did they do a great job this season? The Crown. The Crown. The crown. I know there's this whole controversy about putting this thing beforehand, like letting people know this isn't real, but it's real to me. It's so fucking good. So the crown's there. Number five, Lovecraft Country. This show hit us like a shit ton of bricks, huh? I wasn't even really knowing that this was going to come out. And then all of a sudden, everybody's like, you have to watch the show. And I'm like, holy shit, I guess I have to watch the show. Boy, was it fucking worth my time. I will say I didn't love the last two episodes as much, but going, like, for the the, the episodes that stuck were, like, some of the greatest episodes of TV ever. So good. So good. And number four, The Boys. It gets really tough at this point where I rank things, but The Boys, um, for people who like the first season better, I don't get it. I like the first season a lot, but this season was crazy. And at a time where our world is total shit, it's like thinking about what superheroes would be like and what really makes a superhero. And uh, anytime we get to fight the fucking Nazis in any kind of way, I'm super, super fucking into. Yeah, the boys for the win. Yes, the boys. 
Yes, to the boys. Number three, The Mandalorian. Another nerd show, but wow, leave it to the nerd shows to fucking crush this year. Uh, Listen, The Mandalorian had three episodes that were like mind-blowingly good, mind-blowingly good, and the rest was really good. The first three episodes were not my favorite. I mean, they were good, but they were not as great as the back half of the season. This is some of the best Star Wars that there's ever been. If you're a Star Wars fan, then yes. Then fucking yes. Um, Bruce Banner says Watchmen has to be in the top three. Watchmen wasn't in 2020. Otherwise, it definitely would have been there. Um, a lot of people talking about Watchmen in here. Watchmen was a uh, 2019 show. Unless I'm wrong, which I don't think I am. But if I am wrong, then I fucked up this whole list because obviously Watchmen would be there. But I don't believe that it was a 2020 show. Um, number two this is kind of a strange one, but this show made me feel, and especially in a time in which I'm receiving so much hate and all the stuff that's been going on, Unorthodox. This is a show about an uh, Orthodox Jew and Orthodox Jews in general. It is a mini series. It is um, only four episodes long. I think each episode was 90 minutes. And it is excellent. It's one of the best done shows. The lead character is a star. It's gut-wrenching and challenging. And yeah. Yeah. Unorthodox is something that was so unwatched by people that it was shocking because it's really, really incredible. And it gives you an um it gives you a window into Orthodox Jews and also in a very subtle way, the effect that the Holocaust had on the extreme, like what can happen to extremists after the Holocaust and how they make sure that they take care of themselves in their own. That show just gutted me. It's really, really fucking good. And at number one to me, this show is the show to beat right now. It's so, so well done. It's so well performed. This is the breaking bad of this time, and it's Ozark. Ozark is, like I said, it's like Sopranos and Breaking Bad of this time. It's excellent, and it's dark and twisted, and yeah, it's really, really good. So anyway, those are my top ten there. A lot of excellent shows, though, left off this list. I really wanted to put Emily in Paris on my top ten. Just didn't make the cut, which is really sad. Um, I'm watching Flight Attendant right now. That's really excellent, too. Thought about putting that there. There's just a ton of them. But these are the ones, at least for now, I do feel bad about Working Moms not making it because it really should have. So I will put out a tweet for that specifically. But, yeah, those are my top ten. What are you guys thinking? Streamlabs.com slash Roxy in the Super Chat before we get out of here because we are getting out of here very, very soon. Um, Glenn Caesar in here says Roxy just wanted to be able to give a shout out to Navjot Holly, who uh, his 22nd birthday was on yesterday. Happy belated 22nd birthday, Navjot. Woo! <laughs> happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. I love when you guys remind me that it's people's birthdays because you guys are freaking awesome. Uh, all right. Yeah. Let's see what's going on in here. Again, where's Queen's Gambit? I liked Queen's Gambit, but it wasn't a top 10 show for me. I know everybody's obsessing over it. I thought it was good. I thought it was really good, really solid. But it definitely just just wasn't a top 10 show for me. It was really a good, good, very good, solid, well-performed show. But everybody who was like, it's the best show that Netflix ever did. Uh, Just... It just wasn't for me. It just wasn't for me. Yeah, Fargo is excellent as well. It's a really great show. So many good ones. So many excellent ones this year and every year. Because TV is the fucking best. And it makes us feel and it makes us passionate. And it makes us learn and it makes us grow. And all of those good things. Um, I do need to get out of here because I am going to go stop by Grammy and Papo's. 
because Sky is leaving tomorrow. So we are going to go say goodbye in our social outdoor setting, social distance outdoor setting, not social outdoor setting. I just want to make sure I'm getting everything in here that you guys are wanting to be shared about your top TV shows of 2020. Again, there were so, so many great ones. And shout out to all of you guys for joining me. We will be back tomorrow live with Roxy. Also tonight for the World Girls, World Girls Sunday, our wind down. Come join us for that. Shout out to all of you guys. Nick Bethel, Justin is a Square, Rob Fishbeck, Bruce Banner, Galen Shumway, Pink Sweets, MK Songbird, um, David Detura, Manny Gonzalez, Glenn Caesar, Nano2233, Magnus Magnuson, John Bainbridge, Re Reefism, Fresco, um, Robert Turner, da -da 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 Jake Yacoveta, Bruce Banner, Abernathy Raw, Haskell 420, Jeremy Miller. Just trying to get to my peeps, Daryl Lay. Shout out to all of you guys. Thank you for joining me every day. We are wrapping it down to the end of the year. We'll do some more emotional streams coming up. Some, some goals, some resolutions, some things that we've learned. Star Gonzalez, Legoland, Ryan Payne, Scott Welsh, Mohammed Belsin, Ace Money. You guys are all the best. Really appreciate you being here with me. Love the Roxy every single day. Eric Lane. Don't forget, guys. Make your beds. Put down your toilet seats and your lids. We don't want them plumes. Be good to your fellow man or woman or people or non-binary people. Just to all the people. People Be as, as good and as much of a ray of light as you can be. Reach out to those who might need it during this time, which really could be everybody. Demo Katabe, Rob K, G Smith, John G. Happy birthday, Navjot Holly again. You guys are all amazing. Uh, George Pruitt. And I'll see you tomorrow uh, live at the Roxy. <laughs> What's that all for? She fucking tired, dude.